I'm here with Coach Kreis, and uh, we have a few questions for him. The first one is, uh, Coach Kreis, you've been involved in the league for a long time. Uh, you were drafted by the Dallas Burn after a great career with Duke University. Uh, what qualities was it that first got you draft or got recruited by Duke University and then drafted into the MLS? I think you know, first and foremost, you have to have a certain level of talent, uh, skills, soccer skills, uh, technical abilities, and uh, I think that's what gets you noticed first off. Um, something that sets you apart from the rest. Uh, I think I was a, a fairly technical player at that age. I was very, very small. Um, the other area where you can get noticed uh, right off is athletic ability, size, power, strength, speed, those sorts of things. I uh, never had a uh, terrific amount of any of those characteristics, so I believe it was the skill that set me apart. I was a pretty quick player. I was never fast, but I was quick over five to ten yards. Uh, that's what I think got me recruited to Duke. I actually went to a soccer camp there. Uh, was where I got some, some good scouting there because otherwise I probably wouldn't have been scouted. I was born, in, or not born and raised, but grew up in uh, Omaha, Nebraska and uh, Mandeville, Louisiana. Not the, uh, not the typical spots for soccer prospects to come out of. So um, I think I got, got uh, a chance to go to Duke because I went to the camp there. Um, and then had a very pretty solid uh, college career. Um, scored a few goals, played all the games. Uh, while I was there, I was never injured for any of the matches, um, and and got some recognition. Was able to become an All American, um, and those sorts of things, All Conference, and that's what gets you noticed um, by the next level. Um, and then MLS started in uh, 2006. I graduated in 2005. I played one year in the old USISL, which is now the USL, um, for Raleigh Flyers, um, and then signed a contract with MLS that summer of 2005 for the next com for the next year when MLS would start. Um, and I think it was the, si the similar things that got me um, drafted by Dallas or an opportunity in, in MLS. I think it was about technique and, and uh, passing ability, striking ability, um, those sorts of things. It was never going to be my athleticism, um, but I think I was quick enough over short distances to, to get myself an opportunity. And then I believe uh, once I was in the door, uh, I believe it was mostly down to hard work. Because again, I don't think that I was at that level, at the professional level, I would say that my uh, technical abilities weren't head and shoulders above anybody else's. My athletic abilities were probably below uh, most of the other athletes uh, at this level. Uh, and I still believe in my heart that it came down to hard work. Uh, I think I wanted it worse than a lot of people around me. Okay. This might be a little repetitive what you just addressed, um, um, but you were named as only the second American-born MLS MVP in 1999 for Dallas, Dallas Burn. What do you think allowed you to be given that award and that honor? Yeah, you know, again, I, uh, um, during uh, the latter, the last part of 1998, I had a coach that moved me from being a midfielder. I was always a central midfielder uh, in my youth days and collegiate days and in the first couple of years professionally. He moved me from being an attacking-minded central midfielder to a uh, forward. And it worked out because uh, I seemed to have a knack uh, in front of the goal. Uh, I was always somebody that, that scored a fair amount of goals from the midfield. Uh, and I think I was a, a pretty good finisher. I think I didn't need a whole lot of chances uh, to score goals. Uh, I think my percentage of, of stuff that was on frame and stuff that ended up in the back of the net was pretty high. Uh, and so to put me in a little bit more of an advanced position um, was good. It was good for the team. It was good for me. And so that next year, 99, uh, I scored... Uh, I think like 18 oh, no. goals, like 15 assists or something like that. So um, statistics alone, and then plus being on a very good team in, in Dallas that year, uh, contributed to, to my being, being named MVP. Cool. Okay. Uh, what does it take today, from a coach's perspective, uh, to be a successful player in the MLS? I think uh, you know again it comes down to uh, the fundamentals, the skills, uh, having good good technique. It comes down to now our league is becoming more and more athletic. I think uh, as the league continues to develop, we're going to be seeing uh, the level of athlete raise uh, higher and higher uh, each year. So it does take now some, a certain amount of speed and strength and size. Um, and then for me, um, the biggest difference maker is again, comes down to how badly the player wants it uh, and what kind of competitor person is because I think at the end of the day there's a lot of people in this world, a lot of soccer players in this world that have fantastic skill, 
have fantastic ability. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, in this world and people that play the game that have fantastic athletic ability, fantastic size and speed and strength. Um, and so the difference maker for me, the thing that puts it over the top, uh, is how badly they want it. Uh, how badly they want to be a professional athlete um, and how badly they want to win week in and week out. Is that the key element in keeping up for a player to stay on your roster is that desire to work hard as anything else besides that? Well, I mean, obviously, if, if a player just doesn't cut it, if they can't play fast enough, if they can't think fast enough uh, at this level because our game is moving very, very fast, if they continually miss passes or miss shots or uh, don't make plays, that's, that's going to be the first way uh, to, uh, to, to not survive in this league. But, but moving past that, I mean, again, you, become, you get to a certain threshold of players that can do that continually and can perform at that level continually. Uh, and then it comes down to uh, some character, what kind of people they are, because I believe in, uh, in having good people in the locker room. I, I think it's important when you're building a team to, to build it around good people uh, and also how badly they want it again. Okay. And I'm a youth coach. Any last advice for the youth out there that are just striving to be professional players? Anything you can give them as a point? A you know, I think again, I mean, it's uh, how hard you want to work. I mean, uh, I believe that uh, that people can be rewarded for hard work. I believe that um, that people, if if they want it badly enough, can improve enough on their skill level. Can improve now. Even we're starting to see that that, that people can improve in their athletic ability. Can, improve in their speed, can improve in their quickness, can improve in their strength, um, you can improve in your technique, you can improve in your passing, your shooting, and your dribbling, all those things. So, you know, how badly do you want it? How, how much are you willing to work harder than everybody around you to move on to the next level? Okay, well thank you very much. You're